Okay, so I did this video the other day on the Argon 1 M.2 adapter, and uh, one of the comments I had uh, was interesting. So if I do Control F and type in Rocky, you can see that it finds uh, this question from Noel Messi. Hey, can you try Rocky Linux and see how it performs? So I did a bit of looking uh, on the forums and also on the Rocky Linux site, and uh, you can see here, uh, is there a schedule or never consider it? To my knowledge, there is not a current plan for an official Raspberry Pi image, but there is an ARM 64 installation release candidate you can try using if you have a 64-bit Pi. Uh, so if something is generally for uh, uh, Arch 64 or ARM 64, it may work with the Pi, but it won't be very optimized and lots of things specifically won't work, usually things like audio and things like that. Um, so I had a look through this a bit more and you can see lower down, someone has actually made something available. So Mark VNL, uh, the following is in no way something close to release, nor am I knowledgeable enough to drive an effort to bring Rocky Linux to Raspberry Pi. Just replicated the work of Pablo, a very nice member of the CentOS arm. Because this comes from CentOS uh, originally, and I've tried that in a previous video, and that was decent. So this is the download you can see here, uh, and it's one without a graphical user interface. So if I click on it, uh, you can see that there's two here. So I downloaded the most recent one. It's a very small file, so this 8.4. Uh, it's a very small file because it doesn't have a graphical user interface. Uh, and I thought I'd have a little play around with it and see what I could find. And uh, if I press the Windows key now, or the Pi key, uh, you can see I'm actually in it now. So this is Rocky Linux, uh, and it's very much like Ubuntu uh, in the way that it works. Um, but it, it's actually surprisingly decent. It is a bit slow, um, but uh, and I didn't expect to get to this point where I had uh, a graphical user interface running on it and uh, various different things have installed. I couldn't get the Chromium web browser to work, but there are loads of versions for that, and I wonder if I downloaded the wrong one. So what I've been using already is Firefox. So if I go back to that, this is Firefox. So I'll just show a bit more of the operating system and then I'll show you how I got to this stage because you might want to take it further um, and see if you can install various different things in it or have a play around with it, get more compatibility. I'm actually running it on my Pi 400 at the moment, um, so it may be better on the Pi 4. Uh, so if I press the settings, you'll see that settings look very similar to all the Ubuntu distros. Uh, you can see it hasn't picked up my Wi-Fi, it hasn't picked up my Bluetooth. Uh, it is working on a wired Ethernet connection fine. Uh, this is just a general search, region and language. It's on the United States at the moment. So universal access, all of this is here as well. Let online accounts. Came up with loads more online accounts than some of the other Ubuntu's have in previous videos that I've done. Uh, so privacy, sharing, sound. I couldn't get it to work with sound, and I also couldn't get it to work with my USB sound card. Uh, but again, if I try this the second time on a Pi 4, maybe I'll have better results because the Pi 400 is slightly different. So it's detected that my wired network is a gigabit. But I like the way if I press the Windows key uh, and go over to the right, you've got these two desktops. I guess you get more desktops if you if you start putting things on it. So what can I... There's very little I can put on uh, all of these desktops. So let's go for File Manager uh, and let's do Home. Oh yeah, so I get another desktop now, look. Uh, and then if I was to put on uh, terminal on that, and then press the Windows key, and you can see I can flick very nicely between all of the desktops that are open, and it gives me this other one as well, so I've on a new desktop, but there isn't very much on there. Uh, I also quite like the fact that you can just press the, the Windows key and then start typing, so if I start typing terminal, you can see that it comes up. Uh, and it's just, it's a nice looking operating system, um, but obviously in this state, it's, it's not something you'd use as your daily driver. So if I log out, this is the screen you get, and the username on this build is root, and then the password is rocky. Sign in. You can see last login. Okay, so let's shut this down, and I'll reboot in Twister because I've already downloaded it on that operating system. So I was running it on this micro SD card, but I'm gonna put it on an M.2 drive. It's a bit faster and it's gonna take less time for me to do the installation as well. Um, a few people have commented about uh, other ways of fitting the Pi 4 into this. So first of all, I'm gonna plug it into the Pi 400 and I'm gonna use a longer USB A to A cable for that. Have I got a spare socket? I have got a spare USB 3 socket and switch over to screen capture. 
So let's go back to that web page I was on just now on the Rocky Linux forums and scroll down to the download link, which is this one, and then just pick the latest version, so 8.4, so 23rd of June, so quite recent. I'm not going to download it because I already have it downloaded, uh, and it's in my downloads folder. Here we go, this one here, Rocky 8.4. So let's open up Imager, choose OS, go down to custom, and then down to Rocky, and I want the smaller one of the two because the other one didn't work, and it was actually an ISO file, I downloaded the wrong thing. So Rocky Linux and open, choose storage. That detects that it's my Argon case and my Kingston drive, so click on that and hit right and yes. Okay, so that's written nice and quick. So what I need to do now is shut down and switch all this over to my Pi 4, which is in this case. Pop the Argon in. So that's what it's going to boot from, the M.2 drive. Ethernet cable, so we don't have to worry about networking. Pop this keyboard in, and let's plug in. Okay, so this is what happens when you try and boot from the M.2 drive. And I think it's probably just a general USB thing, uh, because uh, after a while it will time out and this message comes up. I googled this message and uh, someone else had said just putting an SD card in goes past it. But if I put the SD card in, it continues to boot from that. So I'm just going to put the SD card in with Rocky Linux on it that I was using just now at the start of the video. So I put it in now and you can see that it continues to boot and it goes through all the normal process. And I know this is the SD card because this will boot into the desktop version of Rocky Linux. There you go. But I can see that there's something wrong because the black line around it, the border around it, are the overscan lines, and I disabled that in config.txt on the SD card. So it's actually used the boot from the M.2 drive, but then it's using the SD card. So we're going to ignore the M.2 drive, and I'm going to continue on with a new installation on the SD card. So same as before, I'm just going to go to Imager, and uh, I'm just going to copy that over. Okay, so let's have a look at what it's written. That's all done now. Uh, if I go to Gparted, first of all, it didn't expand the partition. So what I need to do is expand the partition so I can install uh, a desktop interface in it. So you can see here it says unallocated. This is 29.16, uh, which is the SD card that I've written to. So I'm going to right click on this partition and do resize. And I'm going to drag that all the way over to the right and hit resize and tick to save all those changes and apply and let's close that down so also uh, there is no config.txt in in this version which there generally would be on a raspberry pi uh, so if i go into this file here and go to boot there's nothing in there but if i go to this 512 uh, this has got all the usual files that you would look for so i'm going to put a config.txt in there but I'm going to put in one from Ubuntu Mate. So I've got Ubuntu Mate on another SD card. Let's pop that in an SD card reader and pop it in my Pi. Plug in all sorts of things in. And that will show up on here. So in the system boot folder, we have config.txt. So this is one for Ubuntu Mate. So let's copy that and I'm going to put it into here. It does boot without this, but it doesn't allow you to get rid of the black border around the edges. And also, if you want to overclock, you need config.txt. Uh, so if I double click on that, so this is how Ubuntu Mate looks. Uh, and I would imagine most of these things will be fine. That must be something I've added in uh, for one of my cases. So I don't need that. I'm going to hash that out. Not that it's likely to make any difference, but if I hash it out, it can't do anything. Now, I'm probably going to leave all of these in, although the command line.txt is more an Ubuntu thing. So I think I'm going to get rid of that line. Uh, not sure what they are. They're all to do with audio, GPU memory, all of that's OK. Did I overclock this build? No, I didn't. So the important thing we've got is the ARM 64-bit which is telling it to 64-bit operating system, but also disable overscan, so it's going to get rid of that blackboard. I'm not going to worry too much about the other bits. It might add more compatibility. Uh, I didn't do this before. I used one from Twister OS, but that's a 32-bit operating system. Anyway, let's hit save. 
and close all this down. So this is how it boots up from the SD card. So the login is root and the password is Rocky. And we're going to update with DNF update. And we're going to install the EPEL repo, uh, which is the bit that contains XFCE, which is the desktop environment. So DNF install EPEL release. And yes. And yes. Then DNF enable repo EPL group. Then DNF group list. And we can see various different things on here and the one we want is XFCE. And then DNF group install XFCE base dash X. And we'll say yes. And yes. And that's installing now. Okay, so that looks like it's all done. So we're gonna hit reboot. And as you can see, it's starting to boot up into the desktop. Root and Rocky. And you can see there's no black border, so it's disabled the overscan. And uh, hopefully some other things will work. In fact, I have audio at the top. Oh, well, I did have a speaker icon. <laughs> it's gone away. So let's see what comes with it as standard on this. So if I click on these, show applications. Yeah, you can see there's very, very little here. Let's call up a terminal. So let's install NeoFetch. So sudo dnf install NeoFetch. And yes. So that's completed. So let's type in NeoFetch. There you go, Rocky Linux 8.4, Green Obsidian Arch 64, Kernel Packages, GNOME 3.3, 2.2. And I'm non overclocked, I'm running at 1.5 gigahertz. So let's try someone like VLC. I would imagine it just does it with that, does it? No. So I'm going to try yum to do this. I've looked it up and uh, it looks like yum is a command to use. So yum install VLC. Let's see if that works. No. So I'm going to try and install the Snap Store because I don't have anything to install apps apart from using the terminal. But uh, a few things I've tried haven't shown up. So let's try the terminal again. sudo yum install epel dash release. Okay, so that's already done. So then we'll do sudo yum install snap d and yes. So it paused for quite a while but it's installing again now sudo systemctl enable dash dash now snapd dot socket sudo ln dash s var lib snapd snap snap sudo snap install snap dash store I tried it again and it looks like it's doing it so the first time didn't work too early for operation okay so it looks like that's all finished uh, so we go to activities and see if it shows up on here in fact if we start typing snap we haven't got anything but uh, if I go back to this and I'm just going to reboot and see if that makes a difference okay so I've restarted so let's start typing snap and the snap store is there excellent right let's see if we can get VLC on here and search and search and VLC isn't on there. <laughs> Why is VLC not on there? Let's just try something else. Okay, so VLC wasn't showing up still, so I'm going to install Chromium with the Snap Store. Oh, and it looks like it's not going to work on this one either. So let's go back to that Snap Store, and uh, I think I'm going to install Firefox because I know that worked before. But let's try installing it with the Snap Store. Ah, so Firefox doesn't show up in here either. Let's go to install, and what browsers have we got? So if we go to, I don't know if I've ever tried GNOME Web before. Okay, so that's installed. So let's have a look and see if we can launch that. Okay, so GNOME Web didn't work as well. I guess that maybe is installing the wrong thing with the Snap Store. Um, so let's go back to the terminal and we'll just install Firefox manually. I just wanted to check if the audio was gonna work. So let's try Firefox. Okay, so that says complete. 
So let's close that down and see if Firefox is showing up already. It is, it's on the bar. Just do a search for YouTube. I just want to try some audio. Okay, so I don't seem to have any sound uh, and it doesn't even have a device there to select. I'm just going to plug in my USB sound card and see if it detects it. No, it doesn't even seem to detect that. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Uh, let me know in the comments if you can think why the Snap Store isn't working. I did do the one for CentOS because I'd read that Rocky Linux was in a continuation of that, but maybe there's something different because it does seem to not show up very many things that are installable, but also uh, some of the things just don't work. Uh, but it is early days and uh, I was amazed to even get a desktop environment on it. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.